progress. Welcome to unit testing video series using ASP.NET Core Web API. In today's session, we will discuss how to unit test repository layer in our ASP.NET Core Web API project. So before proceeding to this session, please watch the previous three sessions where we discussed how to create a real-time ASP.NET Core Web API project. We have already discussed how to unit test the service layer. And we have also discussed how to unit test the controller layer. So what we are going to discuss in today's session. In today's session, we'll discuss what is a repository, where repository fit in our ASP.NET Core OVP application, how to unit test the repository layer using the XUnit framework. So that is what we are going to discuss in today's layer. So what are repository layer? So repositories are nothing but you can consider. This is the data access layer which is responsible for interacting with the database or any kind of a data sources. They basically used to perform the common database crowd operations like create, read, update, and delete. And they are also going to abstract the underlying data source from the rest of the application. So let us try to understand. So if you look at this uh, image, so basically repository layer means uh, this is the data access layer using which we can perform the database crowd operation over the database. So what are the benefit? Benefit is abstraction of a data access. Now, now our service layer or business logic layer, they are not aware about how to perform the database crowd operation. They simply needs to call the repository layer method to perform the operation. Encapsulation of a crowd operation, yes, this is the main objective of the repository layer. So whatever the basic crowd operation you want to perform, those operations are going to be kept inside the repository layer. Separation of concerns, definitely, as we are developing the application, keeping the separation of concern in mind, which is going to provide the better maintainability and better testability, better scalability. So that, that concept we can easily achieve by creating a separate layer for the repository. Testability, yes, when we defining the repository layer, we are implementing the interface-based approach. So as we are creating interface-based approach, it is very easy mock the repository layer for, for, for performing effective unit testing. So you can mock the repository layer by creating an in-memory database. You can also create a mock or repository layer object. So, so basically, what exactly it means you want to use the in-memory object, when to use the mock object, we will discuss in today's session. So these are the main objective of using the repository layer. So how the repository layer fit into our ASP.NET Core web application. So as we are developing the application based on the three major layer, that is the presentation layer, the business logic layer, the data access layer. So in that case, the controller is nothing but your presentation layer, which is going to handle the incoming HTTP request. So once the controller uh, right, receives the incoming request from the client, then it will work with the service layer the service layer is nothing but your business logic layer. You can also consider where your core application business logic, validation logic. So many. Uh, so, so basically, whatever all logic you want to implement for your application, those logic needs to be implemented within the service layer. So once your logic is ready, it means once you process the data, your data is ready. By taking those data, you want to either update the data in the database or you want to retrieve the data from the database. So for that purpose, what the service layer is going to do, it is going to deal with the repository layer. So once the repository, once the service layer called the repository layer, then the repository layer is going to deal with the DB context object or any other database approach, whatever you implemented for your application. For example, in our project, we are using entity framework code. So entity framework core in the sense we need to inject the DP context into the repository layer and the repository layer using the DP context instance going to perform the database crowd operation. So basically, if you look at the repository layer, so it sits between our application and the database. So this repository layer sits between our application logic and the database and main objective of this repository layer perform the database crowd operations now. now so once you understand what is repositories, where its repositories fit into in our ASP.NET Core Web API applications, now we need to understand why we need to unit test the repository layer. So testing repositories ensure that your data operations, particularly the crowd operation, they work as expected. Your entity framework mappings are correct, and your core is return correct result. Your core is return correct result. So for example, if you look at this diagram, right here you can see validated data access logic. 
So this uh, testing unit, uh, right, unit testing the repository layer will confirm, right, will validate that your LinQ core is, whether you are using eager loading, lazy loading, whatever type of a filtering you are applying, data manipulation operation you are performing, like insert, update, delete, all these operations are executed or, right, you are getting the data as expected. So now the second uh, benefit what you will get by unit testing the repository layer is catch mapping and model issues early. So so basically, for example, if you are doing some kind of a invalid configuration, so you are not maintaining the proper key, if you are not maintaining right some kind of proper relationship, some issues related to TP context, then those issues you can easily or or you can say you can detect early by using the unit testing rather than deploying or testing at the other layer. So prevent the recreation. So basically what exactly it means, for example, you are refactoring the application logic. I mean the uh, right, uh, repository class logic. So you are having one method which is performing a very complex operation, which is taking more time to perform the operation. Now you want to optimize that from the performance point of view. So you optimize that query or whatever the logic we have written that you modify. So after modifying, then again, you need to test, right? That performance is uh, right. Performance is one of the key factor, but that doesn't mean the business operations or business logic, whatever you want to implement that should happen. So that testing, right? Testing that logic again, right? Look, will give you guarantee that your enhancement is also working as expected, which will give you confident to deploy your uh, ready code into the production. So these are the benefit what you will get by unit testing the repository layer now. So what are the different approaches? So basically, as I have already told you in our service layer unit testing, so there are majorly two approaches. One is using the EF core memory provider. So in this case, what will uh, what we need to do? We need to create an in-memory database. So similar to your SQL Server database, which is your physical database, which is exist physically. So we need to create one in-memory database and using that in-memory database, we need to perform the broad operations. The second approach is mocking the DP context and the DP set. So basically, uh, what, what basically it means, it means we need to create the mock repository object. We need to set the data whenever the respective method is being called, what data needs to be written, that predictable output that what we need to define by creating the mock object. And one more thing you have to remember, when you are going to unit in the repository layer, at that time you need to use this EF core in-memory provider. Whenever you are unit testing the other higher layer, like the controller layer, like the service layer, where this repository is being used as a dependency object, then it is recommended to use this uh, mocking object, right? So now in this session, what we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss how to use this EF core in memory provider to perform the unit testing of repository layer. And this mocking DB context and DB set, we have already discussed in our uh, service layer unit testing session. So now, how you can uh, how we can use this uh, EF core in memory provider to unit test repository. See, so first of all, what you need to do, let us assume we want to unit test the product repository class. Then you have to create one class file for the same product repository test, let us assume. Then what we need to do, we need to create one in-memory DB context. That means you can consider one in-memory database, which needs to be created per test. Once we create the in-memory uh, right, DB context object, then we need to create the product repository instance by creating or by using the created in-memory DB context. Then uh, once the product repository is created using this in-memory DB context, then we can perform the database crawl operations by calling the repository class method. And finally, we need to validate the result. For example, right, uh, if you look at this, this is my product repository. Now, this product repository using this application DB context. And this application DB context is currently uh, using the SQL Server database. Now, what you need to do whenever I'm going to unit test this class, then for this application DB context, I want to use my own in memory DB context. And while creating the instance, I need to provide that instance manually here so that whenever the operation being performed, then the DB context, what we provided, the operations are going to perform from that DB context only. If this is not clear at this moment, don't worry, we'll see this thing practically. First of all, we use in memory database provider you have to install this package which we have already installed in our test project so if you look at this so this is microsoft.entityframework.inmemory package which we have already installed 
Now, if you look at the right repositories folder, so now I'm going to show you testing one repository. Similarly, you can perform the unit testing of other repositories. So in this case, you can see I'm having one product repository class, which is having three methods, get by ID, add async and set changes. And this product repository class is implemented by this uh, product repository. Uh, sorry, this product I product repository interface is being implemented by this product repository class. Now, what we need to do, we need to write a unit test to test this method. So, the unit test what we are going to create that should create a mock uh, that should create one in memory TP context and using that TP context we need to perform the broad operations. So, how we can do this thing? So, first of all, what we need to do as we are following the industry coding standard. So first of all, we need to create a folder in our test project. So what should be the folder name? Whatever the layer you want to unit test. For example, repositories. So inside this layer, right, whichever uh, repository you want to unit test, I want to unit test the product repository. So we need to create a class file with the same name, whatever your product repository appended by test. So create a class file called the product repository test. And within this product repository test, we need to write the unit test code. So to perform the different kind of operations, we are going to write a different unit test method. But before that, what I need to make you understand how to create the in-memory object. So this is my private method. And this method is uh, this method will take the responsibility to create a press unique uh, DP context object for test. That means for each test, it will create a new in-memory database it will seed the initial data, whichever required for performing the operations. Then it is going to perform the operations. Let us try to understand. For example, first of all, we need to create a DB context option. While creating the DB context option, whichever DB context instance you want to create, application DB context. In this case, the database name we want to provide as this one, system.goid.new. So it means what? Now it is going to create, the system is not required. We have already imported the system namespace. So it will create a unique database for each time you call this method. So once the option is created, you have to create the context object instance. And you know the application db context, right? What we created here, it is expecting this option parameter and that's what we have already created here. And that is what we are passing. So if we are not passing, then what exactly it is going to be done by the framework? Now the framework will inject this one. So here you can see we have configured this one. So this application DP context, which point a connection string to the SQL server database that is going to be injected by the framework. But here that what we are not using. So here we are providing the options. So, so whichever database where to point, whether it is a a physical database or in-memory database that the settings we have done here and then creating the instance uh, right and after this what we need to do we need to seed the initial data whatever required for testing i'm creating two product here and using this product i can add modify right whatever operations you want to go and safe changes means this data will be made available within this context object then i'm returning that context that means each time your test is run you need to make a call to this one which is going to be part of your Right, arrange. Arrange means making your context ready, making your data ready. So once the data is ready, then you can perform the unit testing. Right. So now, now what I need to do, I need to write a test to the get by ID method, which is going to return a product. And what is my objective? My objective is a product exist and it should return the product data. So first of all, what I need to do, I need to make a call to this uh, private method, which is going to return me the instance of the DB context. Once I have the DB context instance, then can I create an instance of this class? Yes. How? By passing that DB context instance, because it is the product repository constructor, taking one parameter of a DB context, and that's what I'm creating your product repository, passing the context object. And this is going to my arrange. Arrange means makes the database ready, makes the context ready, whatever required. Then act. act is nothing but invoking the method. So whichever method I want to test, I want to test this get by ID method. So once we have the product repository instance, I can call this method by passing that ID one. So in this case, this ID must be exist here. So here we created the product with the two uh, ready product information with ID one and two. And here I'm passing ID one. That means it is exist. So in this case, it should not null. Whatever the product name, it should be similar to this test product. That what I have written, and the price is equals to 
this one. So that is what I'm writing here. So this is going to be my successful unit test. And a happy path you can also consider. The next one is get by product. Product doesn't exist. So in this case, I'm doing the same thing. But here I'm passing a ID which is a triple line. So is triple line exist here? No. Why? Because each time you unit test, write any method, these things are going to be executed. This thing are executed means a new DP context, new product information here, product ID 1 and 2. Now I'm trying to access triple line, which definitely not exist. And in that case, I'm expecting it should return me wrong. So add async product is added, product exists in DB. Right. So basically, what exactly it means? It means here you can see I'm having this add async method. So what I need to do, I need to add a product which should add, then I need to verify whether that product is exist or not. So for that purpose, definitely, first of all, create the context object, create the repository object, and create the product which you want to add. And this is going to be part of your app. Once this is done, uh, sorry, arrange, then once arrange is done, then look, the action needs to be performed. Action needs to be performed means what action? Now I need to call this add async method by passing this new product. So once this is done, I need to call the set changes method. Why? Because without calling the set changes method, the data will not be available in the database. So once this is done, then what I'm expecting, I'm expecting the newly product, whatever we added here, ID is three. So I'm calling this get by ID method by passing three. So it should return me the newly added product. So the, in this case, this added product should not be null. And this added product name should be this one. So that is what I'm testing. So this is going to be verify whether the step changes are persisted correctly after calling the step changes. So uh, let us try to understand this. So, so basically, once you call the step changes, we need to ensure the product is uh, persisted successfully or not. So that basically we have already discussed. Let us try to do this in a different manner. So make the arrange ready. Call the get by IT async method. Product is not null. So in this case, what I'm doing here, please observe. Uh, I'm getting the product and it should return not null. I'm updating the stock quantity to 15 and calling the set changes. So once I call the set changes, that means this product to which ID is once that stock should be updated to 15. And that's what we need to verify. So earlier, when the database is created, what should be the product stock 20? For product ID 1, the stock is 20. And here, I'm updating that stock to uh, 15. So 15 means again, if I call this get by ID method, it should return me the product. But at this time, it should be the uh, what I can say the updated stock. So it should be the updated stock should be 15. If not, then this is going to be failed. So now, now let us try to make uh, let us try to understand this thing. So let assume this is going to be 25. Means uh, so here we are expecting the data to be uh, what I can say. Uh, 15, but here we are checking. That means uh, uh, our condition is wrong. So in this case, uh, we, we need to make sure this uh, test should be failed because the logic, whatever we have written is wrong, wrong within the test. So let me go ahead and uh, open the text explorer. Right, uh, clear all test. Then this is going to be product uh, test. So in this case, uh, I need to test the repositories. And let me call, go ahead and run this one. So one test needs to be failed because the test logic, whatever, see, th there is no issue within the repository, but the test logic is going to be wrong. See, this method is done. So what expected 25 and the actual fit. And, and this is not an issue with our repository layer. This is the issue with our test. Now, if you pass 15 here, then the test is going to be passed. So let me go ahead and open the text explorer, clear this one one more time, and again test this one. So this time, all the tests should pass. So this is all about repository layer unit testing. So with this, we have completed, we have successfully completed unit testing the service layer, unit testing the controller layer, unit testing the repository layer. So in the next session, what we are going to discuss, we'll discuss how to implement integration testing within this uh, same solution by creating a separate uh, unit test project. Thank you. Thank you for watching this session. If you like this session, then please subscribe and uh, right, don't forget to press the bell icon. And again, if you have any query which I'm giving more focus, if you are having any query related to unit testing, please put a comment in the comment section. Definitely I'll reply on your comment. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video.